A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet Williams steam locomotive, part 57. Refitting the twin displacement lubricators and piping them to the steam chests. Using an extra copper washer to fit the turret. Cleaning the regulator block and fitting the lever. Then connecting the airline to look for leaks. I've always found that building or working on miniature steam locomotives to be a long and drawn out job. And this is no exception. Even though it's looking much more complete than it did a while back, there are still quite a few jobs left to do, and all of them are time consuming. This particular job, fitting the displacement lubricators one at each side, was not particularly difficult or time consuming. This engine has displacement lubricators because they are shown on the drawing, and besides, they look good. These displacement lubricators are fully functional but not used on this engine as it has a mechanical lubricator. On each of the steam chests there are two oil inlet unions. One of them at each side comes from the mechanical lubricator and the other unions, again one at each side, connect to the displacement lubricators. And that's what I'm doing at the moment, re-tightening the union nut which did seem to take an extraordinary long time to do, but I got there in the end. These union nuts are slightly longer than the ones I would normally use. Eventually, the union nut is tight and the pipe is upright. The other end of the pipe will fit to the displacement lubricator once it's mounted in position. This is very simply mounted on a bracket fixed to the smoke box. I fitted the lock nut and tightened it up followed by fitting the union nut to hold the pipe in place, and that is one side done. I now need to repeat the process at the other side. Before fitting the displacement lubricator at the other side, I thought it would be a good idea to apply some thread sealant to the check valve and tighten it in place first. And then, in exactly the same way as with the other side, I fit the displacement lubricator to the bracket, and then connect the oil supply to the steam chest at this side in exactly the same way as you've just seen at the other side. And once again, this appears to be a longer than usual union nut, but I suppose it's stronger so I'm not complaining. After fitting the displacement lubricator, I stood back and had a look at it with the combination of the brass of the check valve displacement lubricator, steam fittings to the cylinder and the mechanical lubricator I think it looks good, very much like something from the steam age. The next job involves removing one of the safety valves so I can rotate the turret to tighten it up in the correct position, but unfortunately it does need another washer. And also, as I'm removing these parts, I'm being very careful not to drop them on the paintwork of the firebox. It is very easy to damage paintwork when working very close to it with mechanical bits and pieces. I found a suitable washer and in this clip I'm applying some thread sealant to the thread and now I can screw it in position and it fits perfectly. At this stage I realised that I had forgotten about fitting the steam operated cylinder drains. There are a couple of blanking plugs in the turret and the one at the left hand side at the back of the turret needs to be removed and replaced with a steam union. So then I'll be able to supply steam to the tap, which in turn allows you to admit or exhaust steam to the steam-powered cylinder drain cocks underneath the cylinders. I thought it would be a good idea to remove the blanking plug in the top of the regulator block so I could clean it. Really, I wish I hadn't have done that, it's a very long thread. But after cleaning the top of the block with some Scotch-Brite, it did look a lot better. I'm not going to go over the top polishing parts on this engine. Brass looks very good when it's polished, but unfortunately, the brass tarnishes quickly. Time now to fit the regulator lever. The fitting of this is completely self-explanatory. There's a squared shaft, and there's a square hole in the lever. The lever fits on the shaft, and it's held in place with a lock nut. Now the brass quadrant is fitted, the regulator lever is ready to use, and it can't fall off. Once again, the copper, gunmetal, and brass really complements the black paint. I missed something obvious. The original pressure gauge was fastened to the top of the turret with two small 6BA bolts. And I think these holes may just go all the way down into the steam space in the turret. 
so I coated the holes with thread sealant and screwed in a couple of brass 6PA bolts, the original ones that were in there. I'm not going to fit the pressure gauge yet, just in case I damage it. It fits on the rather coarse thread which points down at the right hand side. This is a BSP, British Standard Pipe Thread, and I'm going to use it to temporarily connect the airline to the boiler so I can put some air in the boiler and check for leaks. I connected the airline to the compressor and as you can hear the air is going from the compressor into the boiler. When I open the regulator there doesn't appear to be any leaks and the engine runs quite well. That's it from me, I'll leave the engine running for a few moments. That's all I can do because it really flattens the compressor very quickly. That was the engine running in forward gear, now for reverse. Before I get lots of comments, the noise it is making is like that because the drain cocks are open. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.